What's interesting to me is that whenever I, I kind of share my stories with people. So for example, you know, I own Nike stock for like about four years. I ended up selling out all of it uh, last year when I saw that the company was in somewhat of a decline. But I made six figures in owning my Nike stock. Right, in four years. About that, yeah. Okay, and, and what'd you start with, if you don't mind disclosing? Uh, I'm not going to disclose. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't put, I don't put dollar amounts out there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But You but just, you, was, you just ask us was, to, but I got you. It was six, it was six figures. Right? Okay. Let's just say it was six figures and I made six figures off of it. Okay. So, so whenever, whenever I put that information out there, when I mention in interviews and so forth, the, uh, the DMs and the emails and the comments that I get is, like, how quickly did it take you to flip that? Like, how, you know, if, if I buy Nike stock, when will I double it? Is right, it yeah, it's too quick. Is it yeah, that? everybody wants it right now. Right, and, and, th and this is what I'm saying. It's like, well, no, it, it wasn't quick. It took years. You know, like when you talk about compounded interest and when you talk about, you know, the strength, people like Warren Buffett who made most of their money by literally just sitting on their butt for decades. Right. You know, how they made billions of dollars by owning Coca-Cola and doing absolutely nothing while the company grew. Right. Um, you know, which you could say the same thing about real estate. What, what, was your ROI, what, what was your ROI on that investment? ROI? Uh, return on investment? Um, like 10%, 12%, 8%? You know, like, you know, actually, like, from what you put in to, you know, what you got back, like, what return on investment that was? Like, it was a 33%, 10%, 12%, 20%? Mm. I mean, I, I know that I more than doubled my investment. Okay, okay. So probably, okay, gotcha. Right. So the, the thing is, I think that most people's mentalities is, how quickly can I flip it? Right. Because if you talk about the drug game, that's what that's all about, it spoiled, right? It spoiled many people. Yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. Like, you buy a kilo and you could, you could flip it. You could chop it up, you can break it up, and then within a relatively short period of time, you could double your money and then so forth and so forth. But everybody forgets about, about the liability of when you get locked up and you're sitting in jail for 10 years. Now look at the, yeah. look, now look at the return on your investment. Exactly. Because when you talk about legitimate investments, there is no quick flip. There is no guarantee... There is no nothing. You also don't get the jail time or, or the, the violence that goes along Facts. with it. But I think that most people don't want to look at it like that. They don't, they don't want to think like, okay, if I put this much money in two, three years from now, it might double or it might triple. They want to see in six months what I could do with it. And right. I think that that's such a damaging mentality that most people in the urban community sort of share. Well, I'm going to tell you my philosophy on that. I believe, I mean, one, rap music fucked us up and... So much of us, I know for me, I was brainwashed that like, I remember Biggie saying like, uh, being broke at 30, give a, give a, give a king the chills. You know what I'm saying? I don't use the N word. You know what I'm saying? But being broke by 30, give a king the chills. And I remember being 16, 17, 18 years old, like, yo, I cannot be broke at 30. And I live my life so aggressively. And many of us in the urban community, we live our life so aggressively and trying to make money because we feel like 30 is the end of the fucking ropes. Like if I and, and then when you hustling and selling drugs, you in the streets. You know, at any given day, you could die or go to jail. So you live so fast. But when you back up from it, and you like and like me, I'm 36. But when I look at the millions I've made and the lifestyle I've been able to create, and it's like, oh shit, like damn, I'm 36 and I'm, I'm still looking. You know, I'm young, I'm cool. I'm, you know. So you start realizing, you start seeing millionaires like Warren Buffett and billionaires, billionaires like Warren Buffett and others. You start seeing them being 60, 70, 80 years old, living great lifestyles. The guy that's 50 years old, 45 years old, look at Hove. You know what I mean? So you start seeing like, wait, 40 something ain't that bad. So you don't got to rush as a 23 year old and try to be a millionaire by 25. Like all you got to do is get there. Do you care that you're a millionaire at 32 or 34 or 37 as long as you are successful and financially free? So when we leave the street mentality and I have mad coaching clients out the country, I coach and teach a lot of people, like I'm hands on. And I tell many of them, like, yo, King, when you back away from the streets, you got to realize, like, that money you got for bail, you don't need that no more. That money you got for your X, Y, Z, you don't need that no more. Like, that money can, you know what I mean? So it's a different mentality. You don't got to worry about going away next week. You don't got to worry about likely dying or getting in a shootout of beef next week. You don't got to worry about a lot of those things when you, when you just not get into real estate, but actually to transform your whole life. Because not just about just changing the hustle, but you still out there showing your ass, sagging your pants, wearing gang flags and shit. It's about you changing your life where it's like, all right, I found a new hustle. I'm about to polish and clean my shit up. I'm about, you know what I mean? And just being a, a better person, be your higher self, like, 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 like king up. So, so once you do that as a person, you, you can breathe again. You can have peace of mind. You can have patience because it's like, yo, you don't got to get it tomorrow. You will still be here. You ain't going to jail next week, king. 
You're not beefing right now. So you don't gotta live such an accelerated lifestyle because now you put yourself in a position where you can coast, stink, strategize, and get it long term. Right. You know, because at this point in my life, when I have people approach me about illegal operations, like I don't want no piece of that. It's like I finally got to the point where I could sleep easy and I don't have to worry about the feds kicking down my door. I don't have to worry about, you know, my bank accounts being seized. Because, you know, before b- before I started Vlad TV, I was in the mixtape game. Mm-hmm. Right now, I mean, it's not exactly the, the drug game, <laughs> but I remember being heavy in the mixtape game and me and DJ Drama were, you know, essentially co-workers and he got raided in Atlanta. Right. His facility got raided. They towed his BMW. They seized his bank accounts. They, uh, you know, he was facing jail time. I think he ultimately ended up, you know, beating it or having it pleaded down to whatever. But... I'm watching this going, I don't want any piece of this. And that's actually when I left the mixtape game and started Vlad TV because I didn't want to ha- go through that. You see what I'm saying? Right, I want you. Like yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not drugs, but there, there are some similarities. Here. Right, facts. And, and no, no, yeah, because, you know, because mixtapes were kind of gray area, kind of illegal. <laughs> right. It's like, it don't matter if it's drugs, pills, uh, are you sex trafficking or you mix. Yo, if, it, if it's wrong, it can land you in jail. Like, listen, I don't like shower room men. I don't like 10 o'clock nighttime bedtimes. I don't like sleeping on bunk beds. I don't like, you know what I'm saying? I don't like that jail shit. Like, I don't like eating oodles and noodles with jalapeno cheese, Slim Jims, and honey in it. Like, I don't want to eat hookups. I, I, I like, you know, so... For me, it's like, okay, Jay, if you don't want to live that, if you don't want to have to face those consequences, just don't do that shit. Simple. Easy choice. Now I can go stay at the W or the Regis or, you know, at my high rise and I can enjoy a, a nice shower while myself with my lady if I choose. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be in those environments. So I, I, I live a life where I don't got to worry about being in those environments. Simple. Yeah, man, I feel you. And like I said, regardless of what it is that you choose to do, whether it's stocks, real estate, own a company, get into the music industry, whatever else, by doing it legally in the long term, you're always going to win out. Facts. It's long money, yo. It's like we, is is the short money play is exciting. Yo. I'll be seeing guys getting it. I'm like, damn, they getting it right now. And the short money and that lifestyle could be attractive, but I'm like, yo, I'm not going nowhere. And, I've, and, I'm, and I'm watching my net worth increase year by year. And it's like, it's just long term. And my companies are growing. My exposure is growing. I went from one book now to three books, two-time best-selling author. I got great interviews with people like yourself and others watching. We got this Tulsa Fun launching. Like, oh, I'm a three-time felon, high school dropout with no college education, launching a $50 million real estate fund. The first of many. Like, yo, I'm cool. I'm chilling. So, you know what I mean? And I want to just be able to show everybody else it's not about me, though. Everybody got that, that something in them, whatever that vehicle is for you. And at our school, Jay Morrison Academy, look, yo, we, te- we teach stocks and finance, too. I have a stocks and finance instructor. We teach commercial real estate, residential real estate, business mastery, self-development, and credit mastery. Because there's so much money to be made by leveraging your credit. And see, like, remember how you said earlier in the interview? You was like, oh, man, real estate, it could stress you out. You could lose. You could bend your credit. That should, that's, that's light work. That's light problems. When you 18, facing three years of life in prison, or in Baltimore, I was on the Alameda. My, they just, they, like, this is another, you asked about violence. My man, Rick Fontaine, we were down Baltimore. He had a 45 on him. Some shit went down. Some guys got on him. And two guys pulled up on me with a gun and a hat. I was like, what you going to do? And just my pride in me, I can't watch my man get his ass whooped in front of me. And I, had a, I was drinking a, a grape, whatever it was, grape bottle. And I just smashed the guy in the face. And luckily, I hit the right guy in the face because he was soft because he should have shot me. And he just standing there in days, and his man, some ugly, big, mean mug, said, give me the heat. And I'm like, oh, shit, it's about to go down. So I tried to dip behind my truck, and I remember squeezing my back muscles like, yo, he about to tear my ass up. And trying to run behind my truck, and a gun jammed on him. And this is on the Alameda in Baltimore. It's a true story. Fic- no fiction. So just saying to say, like, um, I don't got to worry about all that shit no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And in real estate... The consequences of a real estate deal going wrong is light work compared to other consequences that I face personally in my life. But if you understand real estate investment and you get trained first, no different than the streets or no different than the stocks or the mixtape game or being a digital marketer or whatever. You got Any industry you get in, you got to get trained. You can't go be a barber and don't know how to, somebody teach you how to do a fade. 
You can't just start fixing cars. Oh, I want, I want to be a mechanic. So what you want to get under the hood, start doing transmissions? You got to get training. But where the hell do you learn real estate investment? Not real estate licensing school to be an agent. That's going to teach you how to be an agent. Where do you learn how to be a real estate investor or paying the gurus 30000 on a weekend and coming to your city don't give a fuck about you? So I literally created my school four years ago to be a legitimate platform, an authentic platform where everybody can learn real estate investment from one of the best. And the realest for sure, for sure. Well, that's what it is. Jay Morrison, definitely a pleasure. Yes, you know? sir. And uh, it seems like what you're doing is helping people's lives and helping them transition into a better way of life. So that's the goal. anything around that, I'm definitely supportive of. I appreciate that. And I want to, um, for you and for everyone, please go to TulsaRealEstateFund.com. Just watch the video, cool little video we have. Our website is an opportunity for everybody to invest together and own real estate assets together. 8% preferred return and 50% of the profits as an equity owner for as little as $500. And check out jmorrisonacademy.com. I got a free real estate investment crash course for anybody. 30 minute free crash course for you on real estate investments. You learn the game.